Welcome to Review Nation and today I am reviewing, I'm going to give you a review of Serenity The Last Night. Now this was released a few weeks ago and um, it's a very interesting album, it really is. There are some really, it's a symphonic album and you can say it's a symphonic power metal album but it's more moves on the symphonic side, it really is. And not only this, it's quite an epic album as well, like it follows some concept, it's a concept or themed album which follows the time Times inspired story of Maximilian I, uh, the, Ro the Holy Roman Emperor. It's all about war, pressure, treaties. This uh, but this album was released at Napalm Records, and uh, it's a very interesting, intense album. George Neuheiser's vocals on this album are fucking fantastic. They really are. And um, this album is very addictive, it really is. So in this review, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on what I thought about Serenity The Dark, The Last Night. Serenity The Last Night is structured very well. It really is. Like, you got some really hard hitting songs along with softer songs as well. This album is a very solid release. So the first song is The Last Night. It's an introduction instrumental, got a really nice epic orchestral feel and it feels like something out of a soundtrack. And this soundtrack bleeds on to Invictus, our leader, it's Invictus. Invictus, our leader, it's our day to win. Invictus is so damn catchy, it's sing-alongable, the chorus is amazing, it leads into a catchy fucking chorus which is just fantastic. George's vocals are just fantastic in this uh, song and there are some really nice guitar licks throughout and really nice chord progression with the use of the pinch harmonics throughout the first verse. The vocals are amazing, distinctive, rich and warm and yet dynamic and I love how confident George sounds throughout this album. There's a nice palm mute section throughout the song as the song builds up. There's a really nice collective snare roll throughout. The it is so damn energetic, it's so damn fun, but yet it's so damn melodic and I fucking love that, I really do. So then it leads on to Set the World on Fire. Set the world on fire, orchestral elements, more symphonic, and there's a nice melody, really love that melody. The chorus is catchy, throughout the song during the bridge, there's an awesome fucking guitar solo, which just melts your heart, it really does. <laughs> Just keeps firing in all cylinders. Your keep of the night. So damn melodic and catchy. Chorus is close to egasmic at times. You're the keeper of the night. The melody is just just seeps into your brain. It's really fast and energetic. I just love the riffs. The riffs on this song, on Keep Up The Nights, is just fucking fantastic. Really is. Really reminds you of something out of Blind Guardian or something like that, especially those riffs. <laughs> It's another standout track, it really is. Keeper of the Night is in your face, not to mention an awesome guitar solo throughout this song that's so damn mouth roaring. <laughs> and then it leads on to a much more slower paced song in Souls and Sins. Again, really sounds like something out of Blind Guardian, it really does. All these songs seem to be inspired by Camelot or Blind Garden or even Glory Hammer, uh, bands like this. And you tell Serenity are definitely inspired by those bands and at times maybe Rhapsody. But throughout Souls and Sin, again, it's got this amazing chorus, a very sing-alongable chorus, a very catchy chorus as well. That bloody chorus is absolutely amazing. George's vocals are again fantastic yet dynamic and love the use of his vibrato along with his falsetto throughout Souls and Sins. And not to mention, you get a really nice guitar solo. Again, his mouth fucking watering it's so damn good this song I really love it <laughs> then 
this song leads to a much more heavier song like George incorporates heavy aggressive vocals like harsh aggressive vocals throughout this song now this is a part of George I really want to fucking hear it tells me that Neuhauser really can sing and really can incorporate the harsh aggressive vocals <laughs> Kingdom Comes is not as melodic, but the verses, man, the verses are memorable. Not to mention some really nice drum fills throughout the song and amazing guitar moments, really nice riffs as well. It's still a very energetic, fun, fast hitting song. And again, Neuhauser incorporates those vocals, those vocals along with those cleans, along with those harsh, aggressive vocals as well, which will probably win you over. And the drumming on this song is fucking fabulous. But then it leads on to Queen of Avalon. The Queen of Avalon, Avalon is more, seems more Celtic. It's got that Celtic feel, especially got the folk elements as well throughout this song. Again, it's got elements, really reminds you of something out of Blind Guardian. His vocals are again fantastic and you get a really nice sing along with chorus. It's really nice guitar licks throughout the songs, really nice drumming as well. Really nice guitar riffs and not to mention another fucking awesome solo. Another solo that just escalates a song into the next level in my opinion. Queen of Avalon is just a fantastic song overall. So then it leads on to My Farewell. <laughs> is one of the weakest songs of the album now when i say it's the weakest song it's still a very good song it really is i just feel that it may have been positioned in the wrong spot on the album i believe that if the if it was positioned a little bit higher up maybe in track three or track four it would have been it would have flowed again my farewell has some it some of its moments not to mention one of the best solos off the album I do like Neuhauser's vocals in this I really do and I love the overall emotion he's conveying throughout this song but in my opinion I'm not really clicking it just sounds like something out of a Disney film or something like that the orchestral elements are so overpowering uh, for this song in my opinion it's a good one, but I'm glad that there's only one ballad from this album. The one ballad that is the weakest song off the album, but it still cements its place on the album. But I feel that it's positioned in the wrong spot. So then it leads on to Down to Hell. Down in hell the only place you can be right. much, much faster, hitting, energetic song as well and i love it love the guitarist love the chugginess of those guitars and not to mention throughout the song you get neuheiser singing along with an amazing guitar solo um the overall layering of his vocals are just fantastic dynamic and rage love his vibrato it's just a fun and exciting song to really sink your teeth in i love how it's so different especially the drumming as well throughout the song drumming is one of the most starring elements of uh down to hell but magnificent song overall very very enjoyable song. So Wings of Pride is definitely one of the catchiest songs off the album. The games of throne we're in. I love it. This song is very emotional. Neuhauser's vocals are just fantastic on this song. The bass is quite prominent throughout this song along with the guitars. The guitars scream. The use of the pinch harmonics throughout Wings of Pride. It's just a fantastic song overall. It's, the chorus is so damn sing-alongable as well. You just feel like holding your mate or something, like swaying and singing this song, singing that chorus. I really love this song. But yeah, there's also some symphonic elements throughout this song. Draw to us tonight, so then it leads on to the finale, which is Chord to Arms. Again, it's a great conclusion to the actual album and um if you got the deluxe version it's got souls and sins yeah the acoustic version uh, but we talk about Call to arms beautiful song this really is at times it sounds quite generic but it's very generic in a good way it's got a catchy sing along with chorus as well it's very energetic it's got those nice guitar riffs some really nice chord progression 
Again, you get a nice solo throughout this song. All these guitar solos are absolutely amazing. <laughs> House's vocals are again fantastic, they really are, and the melodies seep into your brain, man. But man, this song is, uh, this album is just brilliant, one of the best albums of the year so far. If you like symphonic power metal, you're gonna fucking well love this album. It's very, it, it, it definitely inspired by Camelot, definitely inspired by Blind Guardian, in my opinion. There's some songs that interchange with another. These songs flow beautifully throughout this album. Only Nick Pick was that ballad one, which should have been a little bit higher up. Oh, damn it, man. This is a very, very enjoyable album. It really is. So for Serenity the last night, I'm giving this a solid 8 out of 10. It's a very enjoyable album. It's a must listen if you like symphonic power metal, or if you just checked out my reel and want to check out this album, link will be in the description below if you want to check it out. So yeah, comment below if you enjoyed this review. Also comment below whether you like this album or not. So keep the discussion going in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.